assalamu alaikum students today we are going to do text texture coherence and cohesion by the end of this lecture you will be able to analyze any literary or non literary text on the basis of these references and cohesion and coherence let's talk about the text first what is a text basically the word text is used in linguistics to refer to any passage spoken or written of whatever length that does form a unified whole so according to this definition which is given by halliday and hessen text is anything that is written or spoken and uh, the length doesn't matter it can be a single word or it can be a lengthy paragraph according to the second defi- the second definition says a text may be spoken or written prose or verse dialogue or monologue it may be anything from a single proverb to a whole play from a momentary cry for help to an all day discussion on a committee so again halliday and hassan are clarifying over here that it can be a single word a single proverb or a whole uh, discussion of the committee it can be in the form of a written uh, way or the spoken one it can be a prose or a verse it can be a dialogue or a monologue so anything that is written or spoken which have some sign or some word in it is a text a co- uh, now look at the third definition a text is best regarded as a semantic unit a unit not of form but of meaning so because in pragmatics we talk about the meaning of uh, the words in relation to the speaker so that's why it's not just a semantic unit that we focus on but here we focus on the meaning of uh, that text as well now what is a texture basically a text has texture it drives this texture from the fact that it functions as a unity with respect to its environment basically just like uh, any clo- piece of cloth has a texture either it is cotton or lawn so is the case with the text the text uh, that is the words or the sign that are present in any text they also have some combination among each other and that is what produce a texture to make a unified whole or to give a proper uh, meaning to that particular sentence now look at the example wash and core six cooking apples put them into fireproof dish so here in the second sentence put them this them is referring to the six cooking apples so this them is actually providing the texture to this particular text that is these two sentences right so text is basically which shows a combination it can be uh, <clears throat> cohesive devices it can be nouns pronoun it can be pronouns or any linking word that is used in the text now a reference any word which refer back to the previous one is called a reference or we can say the use of a language to talk about things in context so basically reference is anything that refer backs to any other word or any other situation or any other thing that has already been discussed or will be discussed in the future text in the future paragraph the reference is divided into two types exafra and endafra the first one that is exafra refers to any situation which is outside the text which is not mentioned in the text through any word or through any sign it basically refers to any situation that happened before right like for example if you talk about th- something that happened yesterday so that will refer uh, that is actually we are referring to any situation that happened yesterday so this kind of reference is known as exafra The second type is endafra which refers to any particular word in the text. Now this reference endafra can be in the preceding text or in the following text. So on the basis of this the endafra is divided into two types anafra and catafra. Anafra refers to any detail that is there in the preceding text that is already mentioned before. like for example the example that i have just discussed wash and core six cooking apples 
put them into fireproof dish. So basically, this them is an afra which is referring to six cooking apples. Whereas catafra refers to any word or any detail that will be in the following text. Along with the reference, there are two important terms that need to be discussed when we are talking about pragmatics. That is coherence and cohesion. Basically, coherence is the interpretation of the text so that it makes sense. So basically, cohesion, uh, coherence is link between two sentences or two ideas or two paragraphs without any linking word. Like for example, if we say, wash and core six cooking apples, put the apples into fireproof dish. So basically, there is a logical connection between these two sentences. The apples refer to those six cooking apples, right? But there is no linking word over here. This apple is uh, another noun that is used here. In the second example, it's raining. Let's stay at home. There is a logical connection. If it's raining, it, it means that we have to stay at home. We cannot go outside because it's raining. There is again no linking word over here in any of these two sentences. Whereas when we talk about cohesion, the cohesion is the linking together of parts of text by means of pro forms of various kinds. Means over here there are linking words which link two sentences or two paragraphs or two ideas. For example, wash and core six cooking apples, put them. Now over here, them is a cohesive device which is linking the previous sentence. If you go into the detail, then cohesive uh, anaphora or cataphora is also a kind of a cohesive device. Same is the case with the second sentence. Since it's raining, since it's raining, let's stay at home. So basically, this sense is providing a linking word. Or you can say that it is linking the second part of the sentence that is, let's stay at home. So that's why this is known as a cohesive device or there is cohesion in the sentence. Now here are some more examples through which you can easily understand how cohesion or coherence work in a sentence or in a paragraph. Sentence number one, I would love a cup of tea. It's half past two already. Basically, there is no connection or no linking word in these two sentences. But there is a logical connection. Because if it's a time for tea and somebody is saying that I would love a cup of tea, it means that he wants a cup of, cup of tea. So basically, this is coherence. Or you can say that the uh, coherence is present in these two sentences. In sentence number two, suddenly from the dark road ahead came a terrible screaming. Gerald hand tighten on his dagger so here again there is coherence because again there is no linking word but there is a logical connection between these two sentences that if it is dark and there is a screaming coming then it means there is something terrible going on or there might be some kind of danger that's why he tightened on his dagger in number three my X is too blunt, I must get a sharper one. Now here this sharper one, one, is acting as a linking word. Why? Because this one is referring to X, which is blunt. Okay, so because the X is blunt, so particular person needs to have a sharper one. So because this is, this one is cohesive device, so you can say that there is cohesion in the sentence. Along with this, this one is also an afra which is linking to X, which is linking to anything that is in the preceding text. Now look at number four. You think John already knows? I think everyone does. Does what? Now because again this does is creating a link between the first part of the sentence that is what John already knows. So that's why there is cohesion in the sentence. And this does is an afra because it is referring to the preceding text. And that preceding in the preceding text, knows is the thing which is related over here. In sentence number 5, which kind of engine do you want? Ones with whistles or ones without? Again over here, these ones is referring to 
the engine in the previous sentence. That's why these are known as anaphora. And you can say that there is cohesion in this sentence. In sentence number 6, has anybody fed the cat? Somebody must have done. Done what? If you look at only the second part of the sentence, then the meaning won't be clear. So this done is basically creating a connection between the first and the second sentence. That is the done refers to feeding the cat. So again over here there is cohesion and this done is anaphora which is referring to anything in the preceding text. Number 7. Does Jane sings? No, but Mary does. Again this does is referring to what Jane sings or not. Again here cohesion is there and this does is anaphora. In number 8. Which hat will you wear? This is the best. Now here there is no linking word. There is no anaphora. There is no connection between these two sentences. But there is a logical connection. So because these two sentences are logically connected without any linking word. So you, we can say that there is coherence in these two sentences. In sentence number 9. They haven't got my, uh, my usual morning paper. Can I borrow yours? So here there is a linking word borrow yours yours what that is linking to the morning paper so there is cohesion in this sentence and this yours is anaphora which is referring to the morning paper in sentence number 10 what is he doing taking photo photographs now here there is no linking word so this is coherence